Jamaicans in foreign, this is for you. Whether you're in Canada, the US, the UK, or somewhere in between, or even if you are a third or fourth generation Jamaican, there is something special happening in June and you need to know about it. I'm Christina McPherson, your friendly Canadian immigrant, and I am here with the Honourable Minister Alanda Terrellong, the Jamaican's Minister of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And we are here to tell you why you should be here and what this event has in store for you. The 10th Biennial Conference of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council is almost here and it is going to be a melting pot of ideas, culture, community and opportunities for you. So stick with us to the end while we find out what this event has in store for you. Welcome, Minister. It is an absolute pleasure. Hi, Christina. Good day to you and, of course, to your listeners across Canada and well, just generally across the world. I mean, this is the age of social media, it's the age of technology, it's the age of interconnectivity. So, I mean, obviously, I, I don't doubt you have listeners who use your platform to get information from diverse parts of the world. So good day to all your listeners as well and viewers. Absolutely. And thank you so much for engaging, taking the time out to engage with the diaspora live and in color. Um, and it's an absolute honor to be here today. And I look forward to having this conversation with you. So just a little bit about the minister, because the minister is no stranger to diaspora life. Having studied in the UK and lived in Spain for some time before returning to Jamaica in 2010 to effect change in the Jamaican society. He's a lawyer by profession and previously served as the Minister of State in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. And he is currently serving as Jamaica's Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Okay, so Minister, we are going to time travel just a little bit, right? We're going to take you yeah. back to your diaspora life, your pre-2010 self. And you're in UK or you're in Spain and you're immersed in your diaspora experience. And there is this incredible conference coming up. Now put yourself back in that time and how would you have felt about such a gathering at the time? Well, um, I would have been excited. I would have wanted to come. I would have wanted information about what airlines I should be taking that's offering me discounted prices. I would want to know what hotels I can stay at, or I'd be, depending on the location, which is Montego Bay, I'd be, I suppose, 2010, I'd be calling my mother to say, Mommy, who we have in Montego Bay that I can probably stay by then <laughs> because maybe I can't afford the hotel price, but I can stay in an Airbnb, I can stay at a guest house, or I can stay with a family member or friend. So even if I went even further back in time, you know, we had the JASAC, the Jamaican Student Association. I mean, and we were heavily involved in all things Jamaican. So even then, I know that I would have wanted to come back home just to be a part of this sort of experience that, you know, you're gathering Jamaicans from all walks of life, from across the world just to experience the sort of what is happening in Jamaica now. How can we contribute and how can Jamaica strengthen us, empower us in the different areas or different countries, different places that we also live? And so to get right into it, that's really the purpose mm -hmm. of the conference. You know, the conference has a general theme, you know, united for Jamaica's transformation, you know, fostering peace and productivity and youth empowerment. And that's a big deal. Yeah. You know, so we were very, very careful, Christina, in just coining the theme, looking at the theme. And yeah. we wanted the United, it spoke volumes because at the end of the day, you know, like, and you can call a spade a spade, you know, there are members in the diaspora. They, they might be in the minority. Well, they are in the minority, but nonetheless, all voices matter, you know, mm -hmm. because all, all lives matter, all voices matter, you know. And so you might have some persons who feel that, well, um, I don't like how Jamaica is running, or I have a different idea how Jamaica is running, or even though I'm overseas, well, maybe I should um, be playing a bigger part in Jamaican affairs, or maybe I should feel, I don't know, but, but different things. But we wanted everybody to be united. Jamaicans at home, mm -hmm. you know, and Jamaicans abroad. Because similarly, you have some Jamaicans at home who think, well, but you run a gun and you left for a better yeah. life or whatever, or maybe a worse life. Because, you know, sometimes life in Jamaica can be even better. You know, we don't have the harsh winters. And Jamaicans <laughs> will tell you, well, I can survive with my mango tree and my acre tree, but, or one job. I don't need three jobs or four jobs, you know, just to kind of, you know, work it out. But the point is that we wanted that, that unity. Mm -hmm. You know, and with Jamaica, our diaspora policy recognizing that there has to be a strategic partnership between Jamaicans at home and Jamaicans abroad. And so that is a kind of unity as a government 
that we want to bring when we speak about diaspora focus. Jamaica has one of the best diaspora policies in the world. You know, everywhere we go and we meet with different foreign ministers and we speak to them about our diaspora policy, you know, I mean, whether it's South Africa, whether it's China, whether it's Korea, whether it's Japan, everybody is so intrigued. And I mean, wow, so how does Jamaica maintain that contact? Yeah. You know, with some three million people who live overseas. And it's because we have a national diaspora policy okay. which speaks about a strategic partnership. And we also have two key mechanisms to help maintain that partnership. So we have the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council and we have the jo Global Jamaica Diaspora Youth Council as well, recognizing that you have your second, third and fourth generation of Jamaicans living overseas. Some of them have never been to Jamaica, but they hear grandma and grandpa or they hear mommy talk about Jamaica and they want to be a part of it. You know, so, so when you speak about fostering peace and productivity, there is that element as well of youth empowerment. Okay. And having served previously as a minister with, with portfolio responsibility for youth affairs, you know, as you mentioned, it, the youth empowerment has to be a part of anything that I'm a part of. You know, and so we want second, third, fourth generation Jamaicans to come to Jamaica and also to see Jamaica as not just uh, a vacation spot. You know, yes, we get the culture. The culture is nice. The food is nice. It's good vibes. It's good fun. It's a great escape. You know, it's a great time to be alive, you know, to come to Jamaica and experience all of these things. But more importantly, mm -hmm. we want the rest of the diaspora, including young Jamaicans abroad, to understand that Jamaica must now be seen and viewed as destination trade and investment. Okay. So the conference offers this great opportunity for productivity. So that brings in another productivity element as well. So we want our diasporans and we want friends of Jamaica to understand that Jamaica is open for business. Jamaica, for the first time in our history, Jamaica is experiencing the lowest unemployment rate at 4%. Jamaica's unemployment rate rivals that of many world powers, of many Western um, um, dynasties as well, or many Western powers as well. So Jamaica really has become the poster child, you know, that mm -hmm. is that is signaled by whether it's the Financial Times out of the UK saying that, listen, you know, I mean, Jamaica's economic growth, economic output, I mean, it's so great in such a short time, especially when one considers we're in the post-COVID period, right. where our economic growth projections are actually greater than our our pre-COVID levels. So Jamaica has become a case study. So mm -hmm. even the Financial Times have said that when one considers that in about, let's say, 2012, when Jamaica was on the brink of financial destruction, Jamaica now stands as a model that could be studied and we could take our economists and financial advisors, we could send them to Washington and teach those boys and girls in Washington a thing or two about economic resilience and growth and productivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want everyone to be a part of that our construction industry is booming housing industry is booming infrastructure in terms of road network that's all booming um you know agricultural sector you know i mean everything is booming and we're saying it is now the right time to invest in jamaica it is now the right time to get your foothold in all these growing industries in jamaica mm -hmm. that would benefit you so okay. the conference has been marketed just as that so it's united because mm -hmm. both Jamaicans at home and abroad united for right. that total transformation of Jamaica to get Jamaica to develop the world status. And of course, okay. focusing on peace, productivity and youth empowerment. You mentioned a really good point there. So I want to say like, so this conference is the 10th iteration of the conference. It's been going on for 20 years. Um, yes. And then even in COVID, you guys had a virtual conference. So that's great. Now, this is um, coinciding with my 10th year anniversary as part of the diaspora, having moved to Canada 10 years ago. And interestingly, I only discovered the global Jamaica diaspora last year in my ninth year being part of the diaspora. Now, I take 50% of the responsibility because I did not seek out community. Right? And I'm learning from our local representative, Stephen Gettin, who came to Canada less than three years ago and he got involved. He sought out community. So he did his 50%. I didn't do my 50%. But where the council will meet me halfway is how do you plan on engaging with youth and young people like me who wasn't looking for community or didn't even know to look for a community? All right. Um, I'm glad you mentioned Gittins because, you know, he sits on the council as well. And I mean, and really, he's one of our impressive members doing yes. great things mm -hmm. um, in Canada. Um, so big shout out to Steve and of course to the rest of the Canadian team. So we actually have council members, youth council members who sit in the in the US, 
um, Canada and the UK as well. And we rely heavily on them and their networking, et cetera, to reach us. In the same way, Steve would have reached out to you and you're reaching out to your network so that persons can understand that, hey, look, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you were born in Jamaica or not. You know, if your grandparents or great grandparents are Jamaican, you're a part of the Jamaican family as well, you know, and it's not just about doing a TikTok with a Jamaican song. We want you to come down, enjoy the culture, and as I would have mentioned earlier, enjoy the great investment opportunities that are taking place right here in Jamaica. Uh -huh. So our key, key point of contact is our missions abroad. So in Canada, we have our high commission, and of course, we have our honorary consuls. So we want persons to be able to reach out to them. They also, so that's where the next 50% comes in, because they have a network of Jamaicans who require their services, et cetera. And we anticipate or we expect and we would like them to promote what okay. we're doing as a government, promote mm -hmm. what we're doing as a ministry, a ministry of foreign affairs with responsibility for diaspora relations. And of course, as also our key focal point to our community, our diaspora communities there, whether you're in Canada, the UK, whether you're in Australia, whether you're in South Africa, whether you're in China, because mm -hmm. it's a wide network. So we have 85 honorary consuls okay. who represent us, and we have 23 missions, which are headed respectively by ambassadors and high commissioners, depending on which jurisdiction they are in. So that's a global network that connects every single Jamaican, and we want them to spread the word, you know, whether it's the email, their social media pages, etc., just to say, hey, this is how you can stay in touch with Jamaica or get in touch with whatever services you need. So, for example, I was in Canada last year for our conference. The High Commission and I, we arrived. This is Marsha Corlaban. We arrived at the, at, at the hotel and there's a police officer there. And speaking to him and he goes, hey, you guys are Jamaican. And we're like, yeah, we're Jamaican. And he goes, oh, my God, like my wife is Jamaican and mm. our daughter, you know, she does um, judo. You know, and she'd love to represent Jamaica. So we said, well, does she have her Jamaican um, passport? Has mm -hmm. she sorted out citizenship? And he goes, no, how do we do that? And mm -hmm. we said, well, this is the high commissioner. You know, so you come down, you get the relevant letters, etc., and you show that, you know, your wife is Jamaican, so therefore your daughter, she's Jamaican by descent. So yeah. we can sort out her passport, her citizenship, and she can represent Jamaica. So this is another key point. We want young persons to understand that you belong. Mm -hmm. You know, all Jamaicans in the diaspora, including our second, third and fourth generation youth, you belong. Yeah. And I've spoken with our conference organizers to let them understand that, listen, this has to be a central part of the marketing and the theme as well. So that every single Jamaican youth or every single Jamaican, you could have left Jamaica from in the 70s or 80s or the 60s, you, you belong. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we have so many young persons who represent Jamaica. Um, and sometimes you see them on the, whether they're on the reggae girls team or the reggae boys team. And sometimes even Jamaicans, you're like, but but how comes him playing and him live in England or but him live in Canada and him live born here? It's because Jamaica is one of those countries where you are Jamaican by descent. You're yeah. a part of the family. Jamaica is still their home away from home. That Jamaican blood and vibe and spirit, that energy that mm -hmm. makes you belong, it flows through your veins as well. So to our young Jamaicans in Canada, if you are so talented and you want to represent Jamaica in whatever it is, get your citizenship sorted out. You can represent Jamaica as well. And that's a big part of the marketing. So persons understand that they belong and they have a right to, well, to claim their Jamaican heritage. Nice. Okay. So just for the benefit of the audience, what is the age range of youth? Where does it, where's the cutoff? I think 40 is a good cutoff. Really? You know, I mean, yeah, I think 40 is a good cutoff. Some persons might say 35, um, you know, but I, again, some persons might say we have some persons, some person we have a very youthful prime minister. Our prime minister is, I believe, prime minister Honus is 51. He's going to be 52 this July. And it don't get, I mean, listen, it don't get younger than our prime minister. I mean, he's young, he's fit, he's vibes, he's current. He knows the latest strength, very, very youthful. So, I mean, hey, some people will say, you know what, youth is determined by how you feel, how you act, how you behave, how you interrelate, how you interrelate with um with all the different trends and everything else and stuff. That could still make you youthful. I okay. suppose. Okay. All right. Fair. Fair. No conferences. Even the word conference minister has uh, this formal undertone, right? Um. Yeah. But then we're trying to target youth, and we know that we have a wide range of youth. But for the younger folk, um, the younger of the youths. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of exciting or fun elements are planned in the conference um, that will be targeting, especially the young people, younger, young people? Yeah. 
All right, so we are working with different tour companies. We're working with the we're working with the tour the Jamaica Tourist Board. Okay. Um, we're working with the Ministry of Tourism. We're working with the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce. We're working with tour companies to ensure that there is a special package for young people. But you probably want to do horseback riding. You probably want to go. Um, you probably want to drive down to Ocherios. You know, do the Dunsero Falls, world famous. You probably want to go eat some jerk chicken, have a red stripe beer. You probably want to go to Margaritaville the Saturday and Sunday night, which means that you're not waking up eight thirty to go to to register for a conference for nine o'clock Monday morning because you had a really good weekend at Margaritaville. You know, um. So we understand that. So there are there will be these packages, and they can always, you know, I mean, listen, you can get the packages from the um, as a part of the diaspora conference, or you can find better deals online as well. You know, the choice is yours. You know, we're also going to be having um, cultural breakouts. You know, there's fun, there's entertainment. There's a very interesting part of the conference called the marketplace, okay. and the marketplace is is also known as it's government at your fingertip, but also different business and private sector interests at your fingerprint as well. Mm -hmm. So you will be going through the marketplace. You'll find maybe something innovation, something, let's say, robotics and engineering. Okay. That may be catch your eye and you want to say, hey, um, let me speak to the heart people and see how I can either get involved or how I can benefit or how I can make a contribution or how I can make an investment in a sort of robotics field. You might see um, needs because we'll be, you know, we're promoting our digital identification system. And you might say, but hang on a second, but I have great interest in, in, in tech or, or sci tech, et cetera. What kind of contribution can I make? Um, again, you know, there's the cultural arts, you know, there, there's sports. Minister Grange um, has been invited to do a special feature on sports and the creative industry. Okay. You might, again, as I indicated, you might say, but hang on a second, but my homeboy back in Toronto, you know what I mean? He's a really good baller, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. how can he join up for the national team? Mm -hmm. You know, as well, we're going to have Pika there and Immigration Services. Okay. So you can register right there to say, hey, listen, I want to get my Jamaican passport right here. This is my mom who's with me because you're bringing on the whole family. She has her Jamaican, uh, she has her Jamaican birth certificate and she has her old Jamaican passport. It has expired, but let's renew it right here on spot. You okay. know, so it's really government her fingertip. And that's the kind of vibe we're trying to bring to it. So there will be something for everyone. And of course, to our youth who are obviously keen on investment, okay. we're going to be having power breakfasts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and these are, again, if they can indicate their interests early, so yeah. we might have a, a power breakfast one morning dealing with persons who are interested in the agricultural sector. Okay. You know, so you're having persons from RADA, Ministry of Agriculture, um, key stakeholders, investment um, persons who want to invest in this particular industry. You know, you'll have, uh, for example, the banking and commercial sector. So we have these power breakfasts as well to drive investment within mm -hmm. Jamaica. Then, of course, you have the breakout sessions. Okay. You're going to be having, um, well, we can't call it a shark tank. Um, because I, I because the copyright with Shark Tank, you know, but yes. breakout investment sections, you know, where if you have an idea, you can pitch it, pitch it, okay. you know, to, to yeah, to persons who are, are are willing to to fund the to fund the next great idea. You pitch your idea, and you are being in a room with, with with investors, and they will say, "But hang on, you know, I like this idea. Let's look at funding." And bam, you know, you're the next big thing. You're the next big hit coming out of a conference that you came to in Jamaica. Um, so again, you know, we're looking at all these innovative ways to get youth here, but also to make it worthwhile, not yes. just from fun, right. but also investment. Because what I've made very clear is Jamaica destination trade and investment to ramp up productivity, not just nationally, but also to assist persons abroad. You might also interface with, um, let's say you might interface with National National Bakery, you okay. know, who are one of our sponsors. And you might say, but hang on a second, you know, in my hometown in, in Ottawa, we, you know, we don't have any national. So guess what? What if I have a store location or how can I partner with you to get national here? You know, or I have a store, how can I partner with you to get national buns and national okay. bread right yeah. here? And you make big business. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at the news recently, taste, um, I think it was Juicy in Florida. And they literally, a five-day supply of, of, of patties, oh, etc. Yes, was that. sold out mm -hmm. in one day. And they're yeah. like, they issued a notice to say over the weekend that we're closed until, we're closed until Monday. Monday. <laughs> you know, it's something like that. Like for, Because we sold five days. So they're great opportunities. We're going to have some of these companies who've come on as whether platinum sponsors or gold sponsors, you can interface with them. And mm -hmm. if you have the next great idea as to how you can help them market the product in your hometown with them, bam, that's business right there. 
All right, fair. And then now, so for people that are coming now, how can they prepare ahead of time for these opportunities? Can they get information because they can just do a presentation on the spot? So how can they prepare for a investment presentation like? Right. Okay. So what I'd recommend is that you you can maintain contact with our missions. And when I say missions, I mean our embassies or our consulates. Okay. All right, or high permission maintain contact with them because they'll be able to guide you, give you on the spot information, as well as just logging on to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade website. We have the official launch of the conference on the 4th of April. So that's okay. next week. I'm thinking the 4th is next week. Thursday, don't have a calendar right in front next of me. Week is but April? She next week is April. It's, yeah. And, and you know what? It's April. It's June. So we're in conference mode. So it's the 4th of April. We're going to be having the launch from our headquarters at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade right here in Sunshine City of Kingston, Jamaica. Um, but it's going to be live stream. So okay. um, Kurt Davis, CG, will have the link so he can share the link with you. So you can join in and check out the launch as well. And then, of course, information will be on our website and, of course, available throughout our different uh, missions across the world as well. So persons can tap in. And, of course, if you want to do a presentation, let us know beforehand so we can, you know, I mean, speak to the speak to the person who will be hosting or moderating the breakout sessions. And we say, okay, well, you know what, listen, we have, um, we have six slots, you know, on day one, five slots on day two, whatever it is. And we say, hey, we have these 12 ideas, but these six look really, really good based on who is going to be in the room. So let's just run with these six. So that's sort of thing. But you're right. Information will be made available once we've done the official launch. Okay. Then we'll have all information available. Perfect. All right. April the 4th, marketing your calendar, mm -hmm. guys. And there's going to be a link in the description below for you guys to, to um, tune in for updates. All right. Now, Minister, I feel you have a lot of energy. You're very passionate about this. You are good at selling this conference. So I'm sold, Minister. However, it's in two months away, right? And I have to consider mm -hmm. the financial investment and the time investment, you know, taking a week off and also like the plane ticket and such. Um, are there any considerations being made for making this uh, more affordable for members to fly down in two months to get there? Yes. So our project coordinator is finalizing discussions with the airlines and the hotels as well to look at rates. But notwithstanding that, what I would recommend, because listen, they sometimes when they're giving us a package rate, you see, it, it, and believe it or not, sometimes a package rate might be more expensive simply because for them, they're seeing big business, big investment. And also we are blocking, let's say we're blocking a thousand rooms. Mm -hmm. So therefore we have to put on an add-on just in case somebody falls out and so forth. So what I would encourage persons to do is, you know the dates. It's going to be June 16th to 19th, June 16th to 19th. And the June 20th is not on the save the date, but June 20th is going to be a day of service. Okay. And a day of service is very, very important for us because we recognize that members across the diaspora they continue to contribute as a great phil philanthropist, yes. especially to our education and health sector. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just um, in what, what year was it? 2021, 2022, you know, the contribution from the diaspora to education alone was some $98 million, okay. just in terms of philanthropy and the work that was done, donations, you know, school equipment, um, school supplies, et cetera. Similarly, in healthcare as well, you know, where they're donating, personal donating ambulances, you know, I mean, special hospital beds, um, you know, wheelchairs and so forth. So really, we get a lot of support from the diaspora. And I mean, again, on behalf of the government of Jamaica, I want to say a big thank you to our diasporans who continue to contribute to Jamaica. Remittances alone, you know, have made diaspora contribution some 14% of mm. our GDP. That, that, that 2021, 2022, that year, we're looking at about, um, was it was it $3.5 billion or $4.3 billion? But it was, it a was lot of literally money. a lot of money. I'm talking between $3.5, $4.5 billion. Okay. That would have been sent back to Jamaican remittances. So we do appreciate the support. So the day, day of service is the 20th. Okay. And for that, you can just um, advise our secretariat, which is really the diaspora department or the project manager, what project you want to do. So okay. basically, everybody, you're free to listen. If you're coming to Jamaica and you know that you went to Campion College, plug Campion College plug here, <laughs> you know that. So, and you want to do a, your day of service is really. Um, donating some paint to Campion or donating a computer because, you know, Campion has a really cool computer lab, but, you know, they could always use an additional computer. That's fine. If you um, were in Montego Bay, if you want to do something at Coroner Regional Hospital, and you know that, listen, you know, children get sick and you want to bring on toys 
for the children and the hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, just a person that is your day of service. You could be organizing to clean up your old community with maybe five of you, and you've made some um, contact with the community members at home to say, hey, we're going to just cook some curry goat, cook some um, some chicken food soup, you know, maybe do some jerk chicken, and we're just going to just like, clean up a park for the children. Whatever it is, it's your day of service. At the diaspora level, you determine what you're going to be doing across Jamaica. Could be old community, old school, old church. I mean, as in old school that you went to, not that the school is old, you know, <laughs> or a community that you lived in or whatever it is. And just let us know. It'll be registered as a set diaspora day of service and you just do the service on that day. So exciting. So back to the hotels now. So you can just go ahead. You can find a good deal, a good steal. If you can find it on your own, I would recommend go ahead, book from now etc because sometimes the package figures again because they have to hold and block the rooms it might be the same or it might be a little more but i'm sure you can find deals and remember it's not just hotels it is your 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 airbnbs it's your bed and breakfast it's your family home it's your cousin who you haven't seen in 10 years right but just come on down and make the arrangements all right and i'm going to plug saint hilda's i'm going to join this 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 um patriotism thing so i'm going to plug saint hilda's and i'm going to plug cg's um who is my brother's school casey 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 casey, casey. casey. Yes. casey. yeah he went to casey he greeted we had a meeting this morning and he greeted us with his purple, purple and white and, uh, because he, <laughs> he's still on champs high but uh, but listen the young kings of kingston college they, they continue you have to give them that that school spirit you know, I mean, sometimes I get asked, I say, boy, minister, you're full of so much school spirit and school mm -hmm. vibes. And it, 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 it's Casey you went to. And I said, no, I went to the other one. I went to Champion College. You know? <laughs> the other one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Carry the Casey. So plug Casey, plug St. Hilda's. All of my people that are watching, you can comment in the section below if you're part of those ones or plug Campion College like you did. So now, um, minister... There is um this platform that you spoke about at the last conference, Jamdem, the Jamdem platform, Jamaica Diaspora mm -hmm. Engagement Model for Development. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this platform and what the goal is? All right. So what I will say is that the so when you join us for the official launch on April fourth, we're going to be okay. hearing more about the Jamdem platform. Okay. But essentially, it is a platform to keep Jamaicans one in constant contact, and two, this is the best part. It is also a developmental model geared at trade and investment, letting you know what is happening. You know, what are the good ideas linked back with Jam Pro, et cetera, great investment opportunities. So it helps us to understand, um, you know, who they, the Jamaicans who live in overseas, what they do, who they are, where they're located. Mm -hmm. And of course, in real time, keeping you in contact with what's happening in Jamaica as well in terms of trade and investment. It also helps us to be able to reach to Jamaicans. You know, there might be a case of emergency. Um, I use a COVID example. Mm -hmm. We had students who were studying in China right. and we were able to assist them by virtue of you know them having contacted the mission before. So we knew where they were. I mean, there's others who you don't know that they're there. Yeah. With a jam them model, you know, we're encouraging persons. Listen, you're leaving Jamaica, you're migrating, you're going overseas, etc. Register so that we can keep, you know, we're not trying to, we're not monitoring you. It's just that in case of emergency, we know that, listen, we have 10 Jamaicans living in this part of Ottawa. We have 50 Jamaicans living here in Toronto. So in the event of an emergency, we know how to mobilize as well to assist. You look at when, they, when the war between Russia and the Ukraine started, we right. had Jamaican students in Ukraine, between Ukraine and Russia, etc. And we had to literally work with our partners in Poland and across Europe generally to get them safely home as well. And because they were students, we knew where they were. We knew how we know because they had registered with the missions, not all of them, but again, there were others who, again, they just literally plugged into the system to say, hey, this is where we are too. Can we get out as well? So it's good um, to be able to assist our fellow Jamaicans as well. Okay, I like that. Very, very um, 21st century, very millennial friendly <laughs> into the tech. So I like that. All right, now, so Minister, you did a great job actually at, you know, creating some excitement around this event. I feel, I feel the buzz. I feel it, right? <laughs> um, so now I've heard about the event. I know what it's about. We're going to attend. We're going to dress up. We're going to be fed. We're going to be entertained, informed, motivated, all these wonderful things, right? It's going to be, it sounds like it's going to be a great event. And like, there's a lot of potential for opportunity. So now it's yeah. Sunday. We're time traveling again. We're going fast forward into the future now. It's Sunday after the event. And we're flying back to our home countries. And we're sitting down in the plane. And we're looking through the window. And we're like, that did I see? You know, that was a good event. That was a good week. So now that we're on our way back to our homes, back to adulting, the event is done. What do you hope for us coming out of the event? What do you want us to walk away with? 
And what are your expectations of us coming out and what are our expectations of you post the event? But first things first, I want everybody to leave the event feeling that they belong. Mm -hmm. I want everybody leaving the event knowing that they belong, that they have connected or reconnected with Jamaica and that Jamaica is home and that there's a place for them in Jamaica. I want everyone to understand about, hang on a second, not only do I belong, but I can also make an investment in Jamaica and, and benefit from the returns of my investment as well. You know, and I want us to keep that synergy going, maintain that that that, that sense of unity as we all work together to transform Jamaica. I also want persons to understand that they too must feel empowered. You mm -hmm. know, when you're leaving that conference and you're going back to Canada, you're going back to the UK, you're going back to Africa, you know, you're going back to 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 New York or Miami, you know, you're going back to Panama because we have diasporas living everywhere, everywhere in the world. I want you to take that sense of, you know, that, that sense of in, in Africa, they call it the um Ubuntu. Mm. That philosophy of Ubuntu. I am because we are. Mm. So I am Jamaican because we are Jamaican. It is that respect for each other and that respect for humanity. You know, it is just that 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 zest and zeal that says, I'm going to strive to be a better version of myself so that I can empower my community yeah. as well. You know, so that is what I want us to all feel. Well, again, recognizing that Jamaica is growing. Jamaica mm -hmm. is poised for greatness. You know, and it is, as I said, destination, trade and investment, because we all want to be happy and have a good time. But mm -hmm. you need money to yeah. be happy and have a good time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you follow me because it takes cash to care. And as our prime minister um, says very, very boldly, and I love that when he, when, he, when he speaks, he says, we are the government that is creating the cash to care for mm -hmm. the people. Here's, it's been eight years of growth, no new tactics. So Jamaica really is poised for grace. And we want everyone to feel a part of that and to be a part of that. Great. And of course, as a government, we will, for our part, we will continue with that to maintain that engagement. And of course, it's to engage, it's to empower, it's to connect, whilst recognizing also we now have a platform, which is a, the Jam Them, and another platform that we'll be uploading as well to keep that sort of engagement going whilst providing good investment opportunities as well. Great, great initiative. And that's a great, you know, I was going to ask you for a personal message, but I think you did a great job at that. Okay, did we leave any stone unturned? Is there a deadline to register? Is there a deadline that they must make you know that they're coming by? Anything that we need to tell them last? Um, so there's no deadline just yet, Um, but certainly we're looking forward to persons registering throughout April mm -hmm. and throughout May. So we can get persons, I mean, listen, if you, the, the conference, it's, it's June 16th to 19th, the 20th being the day of service. If on the 14th of June, you decide that you're going to come down and book and, you know, because we're going to be having registration every morning of the conference as well. So there's online registration and then there's in-person registration. So guess what? Your friends arrived in Jamaica on Friday or Saturday. And Monday morning, you're hearing how great the conference is going and just the look and feel of it. And you said, well, you know what? I'm going to come to Jamaica, you know, and just check out these investment opportunities, et cetera. And just, you may have a red stripe beer and have some jerk chicken at the same time and hear some good reggae music. You know, so guess what? I'm just going to come down. And you come down Tuesday morning. You're ready to support the conference Tuesday morning. And you spend the rest of the week in Jamaica. So, yeah. <laughs> sold. Sold, Minister. I'm sold. All right. So now um, um, you have been a great advocate for this event and you have sold it very well um, as a part of your audience in the diaspora here and I consider myself in the young people range um, so now we will give you guys the details later on just click the link in the description below to get updates and details remember to put April the 4th in your calendar it's going to be streamed online put it in your calendar You'll also get updates on that. I do want to take a moment to thank you, Minister. It's, an, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's nice to meet you, but it's also nice to have had this chat today. Um, and glad to be able to share this amongst the members of our diaspora. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I do want to say thank you to the hands that put this together, the powers that be. Special thanks to our Consul General of Toronto, Mr. Kurt Davis. And big up and big thanks to our local representative, of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Youth Council, Stephen Getting. He's been doing an amazing job. So I'm going to plug him in there. He's been doing an amazing job. And I know of the council because of Stephen. 
So thank you so much for all of it, all of the hands that came together. Um, again, click the link in the description below to sign up for details, guys. April the 4th, look out for it. And look out, look at your tickets, book your tickets. It is going to be June 16th to the 19th. And then the 20th is the Diaspora Day of Service, where you can give back to your community in Jamaica and do something for the whatever school you want to plug in, KC, JC, all of yeah. the things. Just plug them, come and give back. I do appreciate this opportunity to speak to you and, of course, yes. to speak to your audience as well. So, guess what? Enough blessings, enough love. Big up, everybody, um, from Jamaica with love. Um, like this video, share it with the members of the diaspora, and I will see you in the next video.